Islanders will select from Agati Patters defenseman Noah Dobson. Well, there it is, Bob. You're found money in no adoption. So he went to Thompson. Float and he scores! Was it tipped or is it the first NHL goal? All right, so we're really uh, honored to, uh, to have a guest that really needs no introduction. Uh, he has an amazing resume and is a current NHL player. I'll give you a little bit of his resume. He was a first-round pick in the 2018 NHL draft. He's won the President's Cup and Memorial Cup twice, uh, back-to-back years with two different teams. Uh, he's played in two, t- uh, two QMJHL Russia games, and he's played in the World Juniors for Team Canada. And before that, as a young hockey player, he actually played in our program and is the proud product of Summerside PEI. So uh, Noah Dobson, welcome to the uh, show, I guess. Thanks for having me. So Noah, I guess, first of all, uh, you know, you've had a good season with the Islanders, but right now we have this uh, whole shutdown going on. How are you doing? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I'm doing as well as I can be, I guess. It's obviously different circumstances as this time of year. You usually be ramping up for playoffs, but I think, uh, it's important just to try and stay positive and try and make the most of what's going on now. Obviously, there's a there's a lot of essential workers that are putting their their bodies in the line for us. So you got to remember that and be appreciative of that. And when you're bored, just kind of think of that and make sure that you're not you're not complaining too much. I mean, it's also an opportunity where you get to spend lots of time with your family and friends and get outside in your yard and be active when you can when the weather's nice. So. There's definitely a lot going on in the world right now, and it's just tough to process sometimes, but I think uh, you just got to try and be positive about it and, and think of all the essential workers that are battling on the front lines every day. Uh, yeah, well said. And um, like we were talking a little bit off the air, like you're so used to this time of year, gearing up for playoffs, especially the last few years where you had a lot of success in the queue and went all the way to the end of the season, essentially. Like, is that a challenge for you sort of adopt, adapting to this now where you're all of a sudden not really on the ice at all? Yeah, no, it's definitely it's definitely a challenge in the sense that they, they haven't officially canceled our season yet. So we may we may at some point down the road have to ramp it up again and get ready to play and compete in the playoffs. So I think it's uh, it's kind of managing that. And I think physically trying to do your workouts at home and, and stay in game shape as the best you can, obviously without skating and obviously mentally too. It's tough sometimes just to keep your mind fresh. You, you try and do things to stay in that game mode, but some days are higher than others, but I think uh, we've got great resources with our team sending motivational videos and, and workouts and, and video clips and stuff like that just to try and keep our, our minds in it because in case we do get the opportunity to come back and play, it's going to be ramped up pretty quick and we're going to have to be ready to go right away. So we're just trying to do our part and stay ready and obviously physically and mentally. And obviously, this is your first NHL season, and so I'm sure there's lots of really cool memories for you. Like, anything really stick out? I know you scored your first NHL goal against the Red Wings. Like, is there any special memories for you the past season? Yeah, no, I think uh, there, there's lots of different ones. I mean, the first NHL game, got a chance to play Connor McDavid in my first NHL game, so that's definitely a cool a cool moment, get get my first NHL point in that game as well. But I think there's there's so many little things throughout the year and you look back and you're just like, wow, I can't believe I did that. Or first time playing against Crosby or Ovechkin, stuff like that. So there's been lots of great memories up and down throughout the year and lots of learning experience. So it's a, it's been a positive first year so far. And obviously the things that happened throughout your first year, things you remember for the rest of your career. So I'm really going to cherish that. And obviously, you're the proud product of Prince Edward Island, uh, you know, uh, one of our few maritime players in the National Hockey League. I mean, talk about, you know, growing up in, in Summerside and, you know, you know, I guess getting to live out your NHL dream now. Like, what was life like growing up? Uh, what was your hockey like in minor hockey? Could you just maybe talk a little bit about that? Yeah, no, I think uh, I, I was really fortunate the the system we had back in Summerside when I was going through the ranks with the the Summerside minor hockey program playing for the, the Summerside Capitals. We really had, a, we, I mean, looking back at it now, the amount of guys we have playing in the queue or, or impact players in junior A as well. I mean, we had some pretty, pretty special teams back then. So looking back at my minor hockey days, I mean, some of the, the, 
most fun I've had in hockey going to the tournaments and getting to stay in the hotel, playing mini sticks on the road and the hotels and stuff and having people in the hotel come complain about the noise complaints and stuff like that. So that's all memories that I still cherish today. And I mean, lots of guys I played with in my minor hockey days and are like three or four of them are still my best friends today. So we keep in touch. They're all off playing, whether junior A, university hockey and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool to see, Everyone has their own different different paths, and I mean, just the memories we had are something we, we still talk about today throughout the summer, whether we're on the golf course just playing around or at a bonfire, we're just shooting the stuff about all the memories we had playing minor hockey. So they're definitely one of the more days you remember from there. It's really good to see and still talk about today. That's awesome, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I actually, we found something in our database, a picture of you from uh, 2000 where you were the captain of an uh, Atlantic Selects team in our program. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, in this picture, you were with Ethan Crosman and Cole Refuse. Uh, but I'm not sure if you're, well, I guess that was almost 18 years or 20 years ago now. But uh, 18 years later, you guys actually all did something special together. Maybe you want to shed some light on that. Yeah, no, I remember uh, obviously we played together in, in Bathurst and got to win a, a couple of championships together in Bathurst as well. So I remember when we first all ended up being on the same team, I think it was when uh when Krause got traded to us or and then we kind of were like oh wow we has, we've we've known each other for quite a while I mean we've seen that picture as well looking back we played spring hockey together however however many years ago so it's pretty cool to see like that it just shows you how how small of a world it is especially in the Maritimes but you grow up playing spring hockey with a couple of players from New Brunswick and Nova Scotia and the next thing you know your years down the road, you're, you're winning a Memorial Cup together. So it's pretty special. And I think looking back as like kids now, they're playing spring hockey. Those are the stuff they're going to go through as well. So you really just cherish those, all those teammates you get to play with throughout different provinces and, and down the road. You, you really never know who, who's your teammate, and who you're going to have the opportunity to win a championship with maybe. And uh, obviously talking about like spring hockey, I mean, your dad's helped us out for many years in Summerside. And like, I'm just curious, like, there's lots of folks there that the kids that are at home now with their parents. And I know obviously your parents played a big role in your development as a hockey player. I'm wondering if you could just maybe shed some light on maybe some of the sacrifices your parents made and to really help you get to where you are today. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, the, without my parents, it's hard to be where I am today. I mean, they've, they've made lots of sacrifices, whether it's financially or just, just time-wise getting me to the rink on time, the, the early morning and stuff like that. And, I know my dad's really, really worked hard with that, picking up extra jobs. I know he's worked at Source for Sports a bit in the in the evening just to help out financially growing up. And, and even now, still, I think last spring, he's he's working the, the spring tournaments as well for the, the spring program. So just stuff like that and just my mom making sure I'm always taken care of as well. So, I mean, both my parents have done such a great job in, in raising me and, and making sure I'm, I'm – ready to go wherever I need to be and financially they're there to support me as well so I think it's nice now playing in the NHL you're able to give back a little bit to your parents and take them out for dinner and stuff like that just kind of obviously you're never gonna be able to do anything to to match all the sacrifices they made but just little things like that to try and give back I think it, it really means a lot to them and I think it just shows your appreciation to everything they've helped me with. And I'm just curious, like, um, we really appreciate you doing this because there's lots of hockey players, you know, stuck at home that would love to be on the rink right now. Uh, I'm just curious, like, you know, you look back at, at, you know, growing up and playing hockey and now reaching sort of the highest level of hockey in the NHL. Like, is there any advice you might give a lot of these, you know, seven, eight-year-old kids at home that uh, are looking to improve their skills and reach those high levels? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously the cliche is you, you just got to work at it. And I think that's, that's the main thing. It, it, it doesn't really matter where you're from or how small of a town you're from. If you, if you really work at the, at your game and, and dedicate yourself and you're going to be able to create special things. And I think just a lot of people get hung up, whether it's the team they're on or the line they're on and all that stuff, especially at a young age, but I think, or how many points you have. But I think at the end of the day, everyone just needs to realize everyone has different paths. I mean, some guys are going to go through junior and then right, make a jump to pro or, or play some university then go pro and stuff like that. So I think everyone just has their own different path. But the main thing is if you work at it and you believe in yourself then you're going to be able to create the, and make dreams that you want to come true and stuff like that. So I think the main thing is just work at it, keep a positive attitude and, and believe in yourself. 
Yeah. And that's awesome advice. And one thing I wanted to ask you about, cause you're really known for your stride, like your skating ability. And I'm just sort of curious, like, how did you get to be such a good skater? Like, where did that stride come from? Was there certain things you focused on growing up? Yeah, I think uh, as a kid, actually, I never really was that, that great of a skater. I mean, I, I, I can move out there a bit, but my stride was never really something that was kind of a strength of mine. So I think just, just growing up, I think in the summer, like training, working on that stuff. And I think it worked with some skating coaches as well. And I feel like the, the more times you're on the ice and the more times you do it, the better you're going to get at it. And I felt like just one year, the year I went to play to, over at Red Bull Academy, I felt like that was really the year that my, my skating really took off. Just playing on the Olympic ice all the time, you, you got to be a good skater because there's so much more room out there. So I think as a kid, it was never one of my strengths. But like I said, if you keep continuing to work at it, work hard at things, they're going to improve and now, obviously, I look at it as one of my strongest assets. So it's just all about working at it. And everyone has little things they can improve at. And especially now with time at home, just doing the little things when you're bored and stuff, go stick handle or, or shoot some pucks if you can, stuff like that. It really p- pays dividends down the road. Yeah, And, uh, you know, maybe this ties in with, uh, you know, becoming a good skater. But obviously, there's a lot of kids at home right now that, you know, maybe can't be on the ice and want to work on that physical fitness. And certainly, that's something you would have had to work at to reach the NHL. I'm wondering, is there certain things that you might give for advice or certain things that you might share from your, I guess, off ice experience to, to share with some, some of the kids out there? Yeah. I mean, especially now, I mean, there's, there's so much stuff out there, especially during this time on on social media and Instagram and Twitter and all these, these hockey workouts for kids and stuff. And, I know uh, I, I live with Dennis Seidberg and his younger kid. He's been doing on, on online Instagram workouts from some hockey training.com or something like that. So I think just little stuff like that, if, if you're bored and you want to do something, there's so much stuff out there. And I mean, if you have the resources and you can shoot some pucks, do that or get in the driveway, stick handle, tennis ball and stuff like that. And I know I, I've been doing quite a bit of rollerblading. Just it's, I find it fun. And I mean, just go up for on the streets and, get outside and you still get a little skating and stuff like that. So just little things like that to try and stay busy as a kid and you work on your skills and, and down the road, you'll re- really see the difference in, in your game. And obviously kind of tying into the summer stuff and the training, you've actually been on the ice with, uh, I guess the maritime crew of Crosby and Marshawn and all those guys. I mean, can you talk about maybe the experience of doing that and maybe even the, uh, the camaraderie that maritime players seem to have with each other? Yeah, it was obviously it was something really cool for me last summer. Get the opportunity last summer before I headed to headed to training camp to get on the ice with with those guys. I mean, if you look at the guys they had, the Crosby, McKinnon, Marshawn, they're all top three forwards or top ten forwards, all top ten forwards in the NHL. And you can arguably say Crosby and McKinnon are some of the best out there. So it was a really cool experience, and I think you just see how. Uh, how competitive they really are and that's really what separates them i mean just playing the three-on-three games with them these guys are cross-checking and slashing each other in the middle of the summer so you really just see how competitive you are and i think at the end of the day that's that's what really drives them and makes them great players and it's cool also to see just so many people from like how many nhlers we have from the maritimes from small provinces and i mean that's three of the top players in the world they're all from one city basically. So it's, it's cool to see that everyone gets along well. And I think throughout the season, you, you like seeing other maritime guys have success as well. I mean, I know the first time I got to play against Crosby is one of the coolest games that, that I had to date and just getting to skate from the summer and then play against them in a real NHL game. It's just really cool to see all the maritime talent and it's just cool to see. That's awesome. And we really appreciate your time. I was going to finish up with three quick lightning round questions. Uh, basically, uh, first, uh, first question is your favorite rink growing up. What was it? Oh boy. I, I honestly, I, I loved our, our rink in Summerside, especially now the credit union place. So it was great. I mean, you had the cold rink and then you had the warm rink. So it, it was great to get, I, I love going back there and skating on it in the summer when I can. Uh, if you have to choose between Toyota, Chevrolet and Dodge, what's, <laughs> what's the choice? Uh, I'll go with Toyota. I know, and, uh, I know, I know. Dave, Dave's gonna argue me with that with his truck, but uh, always been the family's always had Toyota. And the last one, a nice softball question: What's your favorite thing about the Maritimes? 
I think just the, how nice the people are, just the, the friendships and how close everyone is. I mean, just being in New York now in a bigger city, you really do see the difference like on the streets and the Maritimes you're, you're walking by and everyone's, Hey, how you doing? Like stuff like that. It's just a different world than the bigger cities. So I love how, how small knit communities are in the Maritimes and how friendly the people are. That's awesome. Really, we really appreciate your time um, and for sharing really a lot of advice and wisdom with some of the young hockey players out there, the young maritime hockey players. Um, we wish you all the best and hopefully see you on the ice soon, uh, whenever that is, and uh, all the best down the road. Thanks again for having me. Those are great. Thanks a lot. 